that are um, really happy to arrange this uh, camp. A uh, big thank you to Lillehammer Olympic Legacy Sports Center as the host and also to the Norwegian Ski Federation and uh, the FIS supporting uh, this uh, event and this uh, session here in um, Lillehammer. Um, and hopefully this can be um, a start of uh, an annual event. So maybe next year we can all be in Lillehammer together. Finger crossed. Finger crossed, that's good. Um, as you all know, the headline is Ladies Nordic Combined today. And um, before we start today's uh, session, I want to hear from um, the FIS and Lars Sotesen. You are with us uh, now, Lasse. How, yes. how important is uh, this camp for, uh, for the FIS? Are you happy that we are sitting here now? Yeah, fantastically. I have to say, I've uh, been um, uh, quite involved, uh, at least in the beginning. Um, and of course, also from FIS, I would like to thank the, the Lillehammer Legacy um, and uh, the support from, from what they've done. Um, and of course, from the Ski Federation and everyone involved. And um, I think this is one of the more important camps uh, that we have had. Um, and especially at this time when uh, it's not that easy to gather uh, and to um, make sure that we are taking care of, uh, of the future. And I think especially now going into a um, historic uh, season uh, with uh, the first ever um, World Championships for, for our women's. Um, I think this is a fantastic opportunity for us. Uh, and for our discipline to, to really um, show what we can do. Um, I see that we have a lot of people uh, entered for, for the week, so I'm very, very happy on that and uh, really looking forward to, uh, to see how we can do this. And it's the first time that we've done something like this. Uh, so I have to say I'm, I'm also curious and I think that this uh, uh, is an important part, uh, especially now in these uh, these times, uh, but uh, possibly also in the future, where we uh, hopefully next year uh, meet up in Lillehammer. But we can still maybe invite also people that might not be able to come, uh, that they can at least join some of the sessions and um, and try to uh, follow the development and learn and and uh, and see what we are doing. So. Again, thank you very much to, to Lillehammer, to the Ski Federation and, and to Linda and everyone involved in the, in the process. And I'm quite sure that we will see a, a very interesting and, and a fun week uh, coming up. So um, I'm looking forward to that. We can move over to Linda from uh, the Norwegian Ski Federation. What do you think we can learn from this camp? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, thank you. And thank you to uh, Lasse for the kind words. Um, yeah, what can we learn? I guess that's up to the participants, what you want to share and, uh, and uh, how good you are to ask the people we have, uh, have gathered in this camp to, uh, to let you into some of their knowledge. Um, i just like to say that um, I'm really proud of uh, both the Legacy Center and uh, FIS and the Norwegian Ski Federation that we are um, able to host this camp. Of course, we would have liked to meet up in Lillehammer, but we uh, hope we can do that uh, next year. So I really hope the, all the girls and the coaches will uh, enjoy the camp. And um, I look forward to spend some time with you in the digital sessions. And, um, I will uh, pay attention to the chat and if any one of you would like to uh, ask questions to the to the people who uh, share their knowledge during these sessions they um, we will uh, make sure that you can um, have room for that so just say welcome to the camp and uh, enjoy the week thank you linda over to per erik uh in uh, the Lillehammer Olympic Legacy Sports Center. You have done a big job with this uh, camp. I'm a bit uh, curious about uh, what you're doing in, uh, in uh, this uh, Lillehammer Olympic Legacy Sports Center. Yeah, I'll tell a little bit <laughs> about uh, 
the legacy center and who we are and why we're doing camps like this. But uh, first of all, so great to see so many people here, a uh, good mix of athletes and coaches, I think. So hopefully we'll have a great, great week with the uh, sharing of knowledge across uh, nations. Uh, that is also really important uh, for us. And thank you for uh, good cooperation with the Ski Federation, with Linda, with Lasse, with FIS, and support from FIS, of course. Thank you for kind uh, words, uh, word, uh, Lasse. So, um, yeah, I will try to share a presentation here, a very short uh, introduction about uh, who we are and uh, what we are uh, doing and why we are doing camps like this. So, um, hopefully, you will. Uh, now see my screen or I will went a little too fast because I need to include the sound so you can hear my videos. You still see the screen? Yeah, so I'll start with a short video. Hopefully you will see and uh, and hear what uh, what the speakers say. Lillehammer 1994 Winter Olympics. The best winter games ever. This, one of our proudest moments, gave us not only unforgettable memories, we also inherited arenas on which dreams are built. And the knowledge and skills to turn those same dreams into reality. Since 94, our Olympic region has hosted 50 European and World Championship events. We have arranged more than 200 World Cup competitions and have established the standard for all future Youth Olympics after the 2016 Games. This amazing multiplicity of events has provided us with a wealth of unique knowledge and skills, which we willingly and with great pleasure share with others. The best race is still to come. The perfect competition lies ahead of us. The ultimate match has not yet been played. The road toward fastest, highest, or strongest is never ending. Those who have come closest to perfection have shown indomitable willpower and courage. But more importantly, they have not traveled the road alone. Lillehammer Olympic Legacy Sports Center has been, and always will be, a tireless traveling companion on the pathway that leads to dreams being achieved both for tomorrow's champions and those who shall lead them on the journey towards the stars. That's why our motto says, train better, lead better, and share it with the world. Yeah, so that was short introduction. Uh, the Legacy Center was established after the uh, Youth Olympic Games in 2016. Um, and we really want to share knowledge across nations. Um, our main targets are uh, young athletes like, uh, like you or many of you, uh, coaches and sports leaders from uh, all over the world. And we also have this uh, slogan that says train better, lead better, and share it with the world. So we'll also give out uh, all the prize winners during the week. We'll also get these t-shirts with the slogan at the back. And yeah, so training camps is, I would say, the most important activity we have in order to share knowledge. And we have uh, at, the at the moment five uh, training camps going on. Uh, we have the um, Lillehammer Para Nordic Skiing Camp uh, that is postponed at the moment, but was supposed to be arranged in April this year. We have the Equinor International Junior Camp that maybe some of you have heard about. It's uh, inside cross-country skiing. We work uh, closely also there with Norwegian Ski Federation. Um, we have this uh, Lillehammer Youth Curling Camp that we um, organized for um, for the third year this year um, earlier in August we had our first digital uh, training camp so I've done this once before uh, so hopefully it will 
yeah, it worked well then. So hopefully it will work uh, good also this week. Um, we have the last year um, ski jumping camp for women also. Um, with the many nations and athletes uh, involved here in place in Lillehammer. Um, hopefully we'll do that camp again also next year. Due to the corona situation, we haven't been able to organize that camp so far, at least this year. And the most important, of course, this uh, brand new camp, Lillehammer International Nordic Combined Camp for Women, uh, that we hope to establish like uh, yeah, a camp that can go on for, for years. Uh, and yeah, of course, uh, all camps located in the Lille Arbor region, but uh, at the moment uh, we do it digital and maybe also in the future we have a combination between physical camp and, and digital uh, yeah, possibility to join in part of the camp with digital. And um, we like to say that uh, the training camp is much more than just the training camp itself. So we really focus on the social part. Uh, when we have athletes and coaches here, we try to mix them up. So they stay in cabins, apartments with different nations to, to ensure that they yeah, share knowledge and get new friends. Uh, across the borders, we have, um, of course, focus on uh, quality training in good cooperation with the Ski Federation or the national federations, but uh, also yeah, more uh, sessions with the uh, stars, for example, and the more uh, seminars that we also will have have uh, this week, as you, as you know. But um, yeah, much more than a training camp, and hopefully we'll also <laughs> see that this week. That is, is not just about the physical training itself that we also will do together, but uh, We'll get the input, you will hopefully get the advices and you can ask questions to to people that know the sport uh, very well. So maybe a little long, but uh, yeah, for me, a short uh, introduction to the Legacy Center, Jan Christian. Thank you. Thank you, Pederik. Um, I think we will move on and uh, look how this session will work. I think everybody's done the right thing here now with uh, done with um, uh, with a microphone, except when, uh, except when you're talking. So I think we are good there. And um, uh, Linda mentioned it, but uh, please send some questions or uh, thoughts into the chat during uh, this uh, session, so we can uh, bring them up uh, uh, whenever it uh, fits in here. So, um, and also one thing, this session will be recorded, as you told me, Perere. Yeah, yeah. So I will also email you the recordings uh, afterwards, so you can, if you missed something, you can watch it again, and also watch back to it uh, later on. Yeah. So then move on to the program. Yeah, I will share my screen again. Hopefully, everyone will see this uh, program. We have started now, and uh, we have soon. The first guest with uh, Tara Garrity Modes. Is, she's ready, I see. So uh, that hopefully will be good. And uh, tonight we're going to have this um, coaches uh, session also. Uh, the director, Eva Studa, will uh, speak about um, how Norway uh, working with uh, developing uh, women's Norway combined. And also Lars Ottesen will have a speak that later on today. In tomorrow, we're going to have this uh, physical session, uh, roller ski intervals. Uh, it's uh, also possible to do running intervals tomorrow. And um, we continue back at uh, 7 o'clock tomorrow uh, evening with um, a new presentation. Uh, interesting names also there with um, Guru Ström Solli and Vega Rastal, uh, scientists, uh, tomorrow. Uh, so that's going to be a really interesting um, session, and we uh, have this uh, coaching session also uh, tomorrow uh, evening uh, with Strømme uh, Solli and Rastal, as you see. Move on to Thursday, we have um, the next uh, physical uh, session, and we're going to have it live from uh, Lillehammer, so uh, hopefully you all can uh, join in. 
and uh, do it together with us. And uh, we also have this digital uh, session at uh, seven o'clock um, with uh, Kerstin Lerscher will uh, talk about uh, equipment control for uh, when we combine the women. And also we're going to have uh, an interview with uh, Jens and Einar Oftedro, who is in the top of the uh, Norway Combined World Cup. And we have uh, Camilla Mälan uh, on the coaches seminar at uh, the evening 8.30. Over to Friday, we're going to have uh, another physical uh, session also live from uh, Lillehammer. And uh, we're going to have uh, a session at uh, 6 o'clock on Friday with Akito Watabe and uh, Mikko Kokslin. Uh, we're talking about uh, their life as a top athlete. So that's uh, pretty much it with the, with the program for um, this camp. Is there any question from... Uh, the people out there, it's just uh, me and the guy, I guess in the cameras uh, talking, bring it into the chat, please, and we will try to answer it, or uh, maybe also can talk here. We will take that, um, yeah. And then we have the presentation for uh, the physical session one before Tara. You have to wait a bit more, Tara. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow, uh, I think you all uh, received uh, the information about it, but it's roller ski or uh, running. It's um, some interval training, five uh, times uh, four minutes, and the breaks with uh, two minutes. And um, remember to warm up good. And I also think Per Erik has something to say about not the training, but uh, maybe it's possible to have some pictures from uh, or videos from uh, this session. Yeah, sure. We'll have a. Uh another photo competition tomorrow so I will uh, yeah but uh, the team will be pictured from the from the session tomorrow so make sure you bring your phone uh, and take a photo uh, before or after or during the the workout and I will also send this description to you later on tonight so you have the setup for the for the session that you as you understand do by yourself tomorrow and you do the sessions all together on Thursday and Friday, live. Good. And it's time for uh, Tara Garrity Moth. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you perfect. My, uh, the best. my phones are not up to scratch today. They don't okay. feel like nothing, so sorry about <laughs> that. Let me know if for some reason you can't hear me. Um, first off, thanks for everyone who's organized this camp. It's really cool to see the Nordic Combined community coming together from all the way at the top, like Lassie Altesen, um, to all the participants and coaches that are making this happen. I think things like this are really going to help the sport grow, and it's, it's really exciting to see. Good. I have some questions for you, and uh, <laughs> hopefully you can answer them. So uh, we're going to start... Uh, I've seen you have partic participated in many sports. Uh, can you tell us about uh, the different sports you have been into? Um, so, yeah, I started I started skiing when I was two. Um, I live in a really snowy part of the U.S. where there, it's pretty remote and there's not much else to do other than ski and, and be outside and participate in sports. But um, my mom was also a mountain bike racer. So... Uh, growing up, I started uh, freestyle skiing and Nordic skiing just for fun and also mountain biking a lot. And I pretty much loved every sport. So as I grew up, I started uh, cross country racing when I was um, nine or 10 and also did a little bit of alpine racing and did some mountain bike races, mostly just for fun. Um, as I developed as an athlete, I started ski jumping at nine or 10 and then started competing shortly thereafter. Um, and yeah, I just really enjoyed ski jumping because it's, it's really th thrilling and my family Nordic skied and all of my friends Nordic skied and it was something that I really loved. 
but I continued um, mountain biking and running and hiking with my family. And we also did some canoe trips. So I think that my early development as an athlete and doing lots of sports and really enjoying it with friends and family was very crucial to, to my development. Um, when I was sort of 13, 14, I uh, qualified for junior nationals in the US, which is kind of a big deal because it's it was my first uh, competition to get on a plane and go someplace to compete. And that was a really uh, exciting experience. Um, and it was also my first junior national championship that I won as a cross country skier. So this really made me fall in love with competing and, and having success and and really made me realize uh, the payoffs to all the hard work of training with friends and and the team. Um, and at that time, I was also just starting to compete at a higher level with ski jumping. So, you know, obviously, if I had been a man at that time, <laughs> I probably would have uh, been an international Nordic combiner for sure. But that option really wasn't open to me as a woman. And I think that FIS was just starting to have some um, camps that kind of included women in um, Oberhof uh, for the youth camps. But even then, they were really focused on, you know, nine and 10 year olds. And by that time, I was, you know, 14, 15. So um, I sort of decided to focus on ski jumping after my first couple continental cups when I was about 15 and maybe not do so much Nordic skiing. Um, but unfortunately, right after that, I sustained and I sustained a knee injury and that was my first year on the national team. So I decided to just take a break from ski jumping for two years because when you're a developing athlete, having an injury and, and really pushing it too soon can be um, most importantly, not good for your health and also not good for your career. So I think this again was one of the crucial uh, points in my career where I had the support from the people around me to, to really take a break from ski jumping and sort of go a different way. So for the next four years, I developed my cross country abilities and also started the sport of biathlon. Um, my first year in biathlon, because the U.S. doesn't have a very competitive junior national team for biathlon, I was able to go to the junior world championships for biathlon. And that was um, my first international competition for biathlon. And um, I think I learned a huge amount from the sport of biathlon. It's very mental. You have to be very organized. Um, it's very crucial that you stay focused and have a race plan from start to finish. Uh, and compared to cross country, it's not nearly as simple. Cross country, obviously you need a plan and strategies and focus, but um, it's it's a lot more simple than when you have the shooting aspect of the sport. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I did biathlon for almost four years and I also lived in Sweden. I went to Soletio Sweet Gymnasium and uh, at the end of that four years, I hadn't really made it onto the senior national team. My time as a junior was coming to a close. Um, so I was planning on cross country skiing and completing college. But I sort of took a, a little while to see if I could still ski jump because I really missed the sensation of ski jumping. And uh, it, it worked and I hadn't forgotten so much and I still had some explosive power. And, and then the season after that, I made world championships for ski jumping and, and had a top 20, which I was really surprised by and really happy with. So yeah, I guess it wasn't exactly my decision to do so many sports, but I just tried to make the most of the opportunities that were open to me at the current time and do what was best for me. Um, from a health standpoint, but also um, from a passion standpoint to, to keep myself happy and to enjoy what I was doing. Sarah, <laughs> Sorry. I think I've been, uh, no, it's perfect. I think I've been, I've been uh, a bit into it, but um, uh, has it been important for you to particip participate in several sports, consider that you now compete in Nordic Combine, which also is some demanding sports, you know? Yeah. Also, I think um, it's really important that athletes not specialize too soon. You know, I, I don't like to see, you know, the 15, the 14, the 13 year olds 
maybe, you know, not going for a bike ride or not going for a canoe trip or not going um, running because they are worried about the, maybe the roller ski hours. Um, I think it's really important to do different types of racing and different types of sport and, and not specialize too soon because you learn so much about yourself and about athletics in general, if you can keep uh, a really diverse skill set. Also, Nordic Combined is is nice, though, that we have two sports. It's not overly specialized. And there's a, a huge amount of skill that's involved in being a high-level Nordic Combiner. So I, I don't think really if I'm taking time to do another sport for two weeks, um, maybe, you know, learning how to kite surf or mountain bike, I don't necessarily like to think of it as taking time off from Nordic Combined. Um, over my career, for sure, this hasn't always been the most popular decision. I think, especially when I was on the ski jumping team, I really got a lot of uh, pushback from the coaches that I was still cross-country skiing. But for me, I felt uh, my healthiest and my strongest when I could do some intervals during the week, even when I was a, a ski jumper. So, yeah, again, I think I think one of the crucial aspects to developing as a Nordic combiner is to to be good at lots of different kinds of sports. Um, you know, for me this summer, I've actually been doing a lot of classic skiing. So not skate skiing, but a lot of classic skiing, a lot of classic sprinting and really trying to develop my upper body, um, which will definitely help me as a Nordic combiner, but also is maybe a little bit away from what might be recommended in terms of directly for the sport. Uh, what's been the keys for your success so far? <laughs> it's a hard question, but... Yeah, I mean, I I am very honored that people think I'm a really good Nordic combiner, and I've certainly had an amazing time in the first couple of years. But uh, the reality is, I've only been doing it for two or three years, and I don't think the story is really written yet. I think the the sport is developing really fast, so I don't necessarily think that I have the key to success at all. Um, but I think what's really important uh, in Nordic Combined is that you have really high standards for yourself in both jumping and cross-country skiing. So it's really important to, to set aside time to develop as strictly a cross-country skier and as strictly a jumper. I think this is really why I have had success so far is because I could compete internationally as a ski jumper. And also I can compete at least on a national level and a high level for cross country. Um, you're with sports like biathlon and Nordic combined, you will not be able to make it at the top, top level if you are not really, really good at both sports. So instead of thinking about training 50% for cross country and 50% jumping, you really have to look at it as, you know, how am I going to train a hundred percent for two different sports and, for sure, you have to compromise some days, but really, it's just more work to do two sports at once. It's not half of this work and half of that work, if that makes sense at all. <laughs> That's good. Um, as you know, there's a lot of younger athletes there in this um, in this uh, camp. So I just want to ask you if you have any advice to the younger athletes. Uh, yeah, I think that. Star? <laughs> uh, <laughs> my advice for the younger athletes like i just said is to to keep your standards high and really try to progress in in both skiing and uh jumping and i think one really good way to do that especially for the young women who are now doing nordic combined is to find a cross-country group to train with of people your own age because i know for me for sure i struggle to find women to train with and there's not many nordic combined women and I think it's really important to not train with the men all the time, although I think that can also be really good. Um, so yeah, find a group uh, of women, of uh, girls your own age to train with that are maybe they don't ski jump, maybe they do, but to help, to help push you and also just to have fun because it's really motivating to have a group of friends, a group of, of girls to train with. Um, and and also, I think it's it's really important to stay motivated to connect with other other Nordic combiners, other girls who do Nordic combined. Because right now, we're most of us are training in really small groups, and that can be um, sort of isolating. Even if you have some really great coaches and really great 
you know, uh, male teammates, they they aren't going to understand 100% what you're doing. And it's sometimes easy to feel a little bit alone. So I think, um, yeah, making sure you have a good group and you really enjoy training and making sure you remember that there's another group of women in the world doing this with you, even if we're not all training together. Good. Uh, we want to challenge everyone in involved today and uh, how we can uh, develop uh, Nordic uh, combined for uh, women. And uh, hopefully all guests here now can um, bring out the questions or thoughts into the chat. So we're going to end up after talking to Tara, have a discussion um, with um, with all the athletes and some of the athletes, I guess. But uh, first, we'll hear for your thoughts, Tara, the million dollar question. What do you think will be the important to de develop the sport uh, further? Um, so I think in terms of what is important to develop the sport further is, you know, first off, do what we have been doing, because the progress that we have made as a community, as an international sports family, is really amazing in the past five years. It's incredible what we've achieved. It's on a much, much faster track and more progressive track than ski jumping. And I'm really impressed with the progress that we've made so far. So number one, do what we've been doing. Uh, as far as an athlete, I think it's really important for all the, the young women and young men to promote the sport and understand what a privilege it is to do uh, Nordic Combined at an international and national level. And I also think that it really falls on the national teams to help support young women and also young men to their best of best of their abilities. This can be pretty challenging because uh, Nordic Combined is a small sport and maybe they can't support the athletes as much as they would like uh, with funding, depending on what countries the athletes are in. But I think it's really important for the national governing bodies to reach out to junior skiers and let them know that you know, you are noticed and that you're appreciated and, and give training plans and give advice and, and give really what they can to the junior skiers, especially the young women. Okay, thank you, Tara. I will now also hear from uh, some of the other athletes here. Do you have any questions, uh, Linda, or thoughts from the other athletes? I've challenged the Norwegians today, so hopefully they will uh, show up here. Yeah, we don't have any questions in the chat yet, but it's uh, still time for that. But I was wondering, Tara, you have been traveling around the world. You've been uh, training in Norway with the Norwegian girls, and uh, I think you've also been training with some of the other uh, girls uh, in Europe. Can you um, tell us a bit about that? Have you experienced any differences between the nations, or is this... Uh, uh, is this kind of cooperation that you have been doing something you would uh, you would uh, let the, I'll tell the other girls to do? It's been a good experience for you or what? Yeah, so I think it's really special that in the Nordic Combined family, we often uh, train together because we're small teams in, in different places. And like you said, that really allows us to uh, learn from each other and, and do um, workouts together that maybe we wouldn't do. I was invited last year to train with the Norwegian team, which was an amazing experience. And from what I saw, uh, and I really appreciated that the Nordic team, the Nor Norwegian team is very organized and has a really good plan. And um, maybe your actual training isn't so different, but the simplicity and organization is really key in a sport like Nordic Combined mm -hmm. because we are trying to do two sports at once and hopefully have time for schoolwork and families and eating healthy. So organization uh, is really important and being in Norway really helped me uh, recognize that. I've also been able to train with the Slovenians and I think that they're really good at um, the ski jumping side of things and really making sure that they have high quality uh, gym sessions and weight sessions and really uh, rest around their explosive uh, and weight training sessions. So making sure that whenever you're doing weight training and explosive plyometric training, if you don't rest after that training, you're not actually getting the full effect. And they really do that well. Um, and 
I haven't trained too much with the German team, but I mean, from what I've seen, pretty much all teams have a unique strength. And I think we're doing a great job of, of growing together and learning from each other. Mm. That's good. Really nice. Any questions from yeah. the other girls? Or thoughts about how we can yeah. develop Nori Combine. Uh, in five seconds, I have to ask some of the Norwegians. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> what did you say, Tara? I think it's uh, if anyone wants to ask questions in Norwegian or a different language, I'm sure that. <laughs> <laughs> I think also the one thing I've really noticed about Nordic Combined is often the men are a little bit afraid to do uh, upper body weights and upper body strength. And this summer, that's something I've really been focusing on is doing a lot of double pulling, doing a lot of pull ups and a lot of upper body weights. And everybody is different. And I know that what's true for me may not be true for other women. But I think that female Nordic combiners do not need to be afraid of developing their upper body too much because we don't gain nearly as much upper body weight. So I think my personal advice to young women who are Nordic combiners is to make sure you have really strong upper bodies and strong core and not worry that you would maybe gain some weight for ski jumping because at the end of the day, being strong is really good for your sport. And I've, I've definitely seen some coaches be concerned about that with the men. And I think it's a, a good choice there. Obviously, you don't want to look like uh, some of the top cross-country sprinters and try to fit into a jumpsuit. But I, I think the women really don't have to worry about gaining too much muscle, which is sort of something unique to women's Nordic combined versus men's Nordic combined. But that's just my personal opinion. So I'm not a scientist. <laughs> yeah, we'll hear tomorrow, but I think yeah, we have a I question. Have a, have a, yeah, or I thought, I don't know, I get it on WhatsApp group here. So uh, it's from Thea again. So uh, Thea, are you around? Do, 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 do. Yeah, hello. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Thea. Um, should we take the question first or the um, things that we can develop? You can start with we a question, a question but, but I want to see you guys. You want to see me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now we have to practice it. <laughs> hey, Thea. Good. Okay, let's go there. Uh, yeah, um, some of the things I have written down uh, that we can do to develop Nordic Combine is to uh, increase the distance in our races uh, and have uh, more um, camps like this to cooperate uh, between the nations uh, and we should also work uh, closer with ski jumping and cross country and uh, this is for both women and men in Nordic Combine but we should have uh, more variation in our um, um, in our program so because there's many 10k condition for the men and we should have more um, team competitions and stuff like that. So that's my my um, suggestions. <laughs> yeah, I can really agree with all of those things. Yeah, it's. Uh, I would really love to see some different formats, uh, some sprints, like we did at the Norwegian Nationals last year. That was really fun, and and having maybe some longer distances. And the, the team events really bring the men and the women together and build team spirit, which is really fun to see. Yeah. Good. You have some more, Theo? Mm, well, good. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I think we have a question, Linda, in the chat from uh, yeah, Emma. Yeah, we have a question. We have a question from uh, Emma Volasek. Do you want to? Uh... Ask it yourself, Emma. Emma. We can see you. Hi. 
Hi, Emma. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Uh, do, do I ask my question? Yep. Yeah, just ask. Okay. Uh, my question was for Tara. Um, how many hours of endurance do you do? That's a good question. Um, this year, I'm trying to do around 600 hours. I think cross-country skiers for my age would probably do maybe close to 750. But I think, how old are you now? Uh, and, 17. Oh, yeah, I think when I was 17, I for sure didn't do so much. I did probably about 400 hours when I was only training for a cross-country skier. So I think if you train, you know, 350 to 450 hours, that's more than enough. And also you have to, with Nordic combined, you really have to balance the two sports well, right? Because if you're tired all the time, you're going to not have quality training on the hill. So what I suggest is that you have a period training. So maybe one month you don't jump so much at all. And you really focus on cross-country skiing and you allow yourself to be more tired and um, push yourself more. And then the next month you have um, less cross-country hours and more jumping training because that way you're able to have quality cross-country training and then also quality ski jumping training. For me, I like to have uh, one really big distance month in May and sometimes going into June and not even start ski jumping until June. And then I also like to have a lot, uh, another distance month in October, uh, November before the season to make sure that I have uh, efficiency and you know base training going into the season. But everyone's gonna be different and you have to kind of talk to your coach, but for sure you need the, the base hours and the L, what we call it L1, but the much easier level training is really gonna build your efficiency and your overall conditioning. Um, but I think uh, most cross country coaches can can help you find a plan that's really good for you. Okay, thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you. Super. I don't think, uh, yeah, maybe we have some more. I think um, maybe it's one more innovation question soon in a minute or two. I don't know. Do we have any other questions or thoughts from the other athletes here in the um, in this session? I just want to hear with the Lasse if it's um, if it's possible or Lasse around. Um, what do you think, Lasse, about uh, developing uh, for the Nori Combined Girls? You have done a good job here in the in the FIS. Well, um, I think uh, Tara and uh, everyone involved has done a good job. Uh, we're trying to facilitate and trying to uh, make sure that we are able to give them uh, the opportunities. Um, so, I mean, I think that's our, our job and, and I'm happy to hear that uh, things are, are going in the right direction. Um, we are definitely on a good track. Um, I think it's important that we are... Um, yeah, not uh, taking too many steps too fast or too soon. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, going into this coming winter with World Cup uh, Premier and also with World Championships, that's definitely uh, uh, one of the main steps that we need to take. Um, the main goal was, of course, to be in uh, the Olympics in 22. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that uh, was not um, the case. Uh, but uh, for sure, I think... Uh, when the IOC are moving into their uh, sessions in the summer of 22 after the Beijing Olympics, that's when they will decide in terms of the program for 26. And uh, the next coming two seasons for us are, are crucial in terms of going into and moving into the Olympics. So uh, camps like this is one part of it uh, to try to spread what we do um, and to hopefully uh, make sure that more nations are coming into our sport. And that's definitely one of the main topics for us. Uh, and I'm happy to see a lot of athletes and coaches here. And I think uh, Tara will be hopefully joining us all the way to 26, uh, going into the Olympics. Um, but um, I think the next two seasons will be important for us. So we're definitely looking forward to that. 
um, but also to try to then bring more and new nations into our sport is definitely one of our main goals. Um, and, and getting feedback from the athletes here is very important as well uh, in terms of formats or how we can set up and what kind of challenges we are looking into for the next two seasons. So um, really appreciate that part uh, coming in. So that's, that's sort of from our side, uh, some of the topics that we are working on now and, and going into the next two seasons. Yeah, just to add to that, I'll say I, I want to thank you and, and everyone who's put so much work into it. But I think one message I would have for the, the young women and the women who are doing Nordic Combined is that we really are making history. And I think on all the teams, we're still working out the, the kinks and maybe how the teams run and maybe how your programs work um, on a training level. But it's really important to remember that we're we're making history and we're doing something that really has never been done before. And that's going to be an amazing journey, but also have some bumps in the road. But being part of this this movement and this this history in the making is is really a special opportunity. Super, thank you, Lasse and Tara. Uh, per Erik, are you around? Yes, I am. We have this big surprise in the end of the, the interview with Tara. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've been following this interesting session. Uh, yeah, cool to hear uh, so many interesting thoughts here. So thank you. And thank you, Tara, for joining us today. So. Yeah, it was really great. Uh, so I get to announce the winner of the photo competition for today. And yeah. from Finland. And are you going to show the picture? I don't know if you're ready. Yeah, I'm uh, ready. <laughs> the winner is, uh, I'm maybe not going to pronounce her name correctly, but Nona Leitinen from Finland. So congratulations. And I think you will get a t-shirt and some fun things uh, from the Norwegian Olympic Legacy Foundation. Yeah, she will actually got the mascot from the Youth Olympics and also the official torch from the 94 Olympics. Wow. And this cool buff from the Legacy Center. So cool. this is also the prize for the competition tomorrow. So uh, we hope to get even more pictures uh, sent to us uh, on our uh, Instagram account. And uh, if you haven't joined the Facebook group or the Instagram account yet, please, please join us. Uh, and uh, yeah, we also want to know who you are. So if you if you are comfortable about it, please like make a short video on the training tomorrow, post some pictures on the Facebook group so we can see we are not together physical, but we can be together in uh, social media at least, I think. So uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see some uh, uh, more yeah, or yeah, another cool pictures tomorrow and um, yeah. Good. And yeah, I said it earlier, but uh, the team tomorrow for the photo competition is uh, you take a picture during the exercise, during the interval workout. So that's like the team. And be creative so you can win, win tomorrow then. Good. Thank you, Perik. And uh, once again, thank you to Tara. Do you have something more, Perik or Linda? Or are we true? We have a... We have a comment on uh, Mitsunsa sisters. Uh, ah. <laughs> either Nora or Hanna would like to uh, say something. To uh, they have a comment to discuss for future development. So uh, I don't know uh, which of one of you is going to speak, but uh, Nora or Hanna, put on your camera and uh, let us hear what you have to say. Yes, it's uh, Hanna here. Uh, and I think it's a bit strange that uh, we girls uh, have the same points uh, per minute as the boys when we only have the half of the distance. Uh, but uh, maybe as uh, Thea said, with the longer distance, uh, it will be more right. But um, yeah, what do you think about this? Maybe Tara has a comment or someone want to discuss that? I think uh, it's... 15 points per minute for the men when they do 5K as well, though. But I think that the overall point of having different uh, different distances would be really great. 
But I think that's a good question to ask Lasse is, uh, are there any differences between the points for men and women? Um, good question. And, and uh, uh, I mean, at the moment, you're right, Tara. Um, we do have 15 points per minute also for the for the men's when they do a 5K. Uh, when we are in Ruka in the beginning of the season or in Seefeld, we have a 5K race for the men's and it's the same points as, as for the women's. Um, but definitely um, going into this season, uh, spending also the time to evaluate last season and going into this World Cup season, I'm quite sure that um, after this season again, we will sit down and see the, the development. Uh, as Tara mentioned early on, uh, we've seen a uh, fantastic development in, in Nordic combined women's for the last two, three years. And it's uh, almost going faster than we we can 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 follow, um, and it's really positive also to see what uh, what uh, the women's and and also the national teams and and everyone around are developing. So we will definitely look into and and uh, and see what and how we can uh, keep on developing uh, and to make sure that uh, it's as fair as possible, uh, but at the same time that it's also exciting to watch. Uh, because I think those two are definitely a couple of the most important parts that we will have to look into for the future for the women's as well. That the events are exciting, but of course that the fairness is uh, is there as well. Thank you. I think maybe this is the start of our discussion uh, for the week and uh, maybe some other uh, uh, things also to discuss. Um, if you don't have any more questions, Linda, at uh, the chat, I uh, think maybe our, we are done with the first session. I just posted the link to the Facebook group and Instagram account now, so everyone can find it easily. Yeah, and, and make for sure the coaches, to follow it. Yeah, sure. We want everyone in there. Uh, and uh, also the coaches meeting coming up soon. I will send you another link to another meeting then so you will receive another link for the coaches meeting super big thanks to all of you and especially to uh, tara for taking her time uh, and good luck for tomorrow's uh, interval session and i'll see you again at seven o'clock uh, tomorrow super bye bye, bye. thank you